Hey everybody, welcome to the SoCal Scene. I'm Melvin Robert. Okay, his images of Hollywood's golden era are truly unforgettable. Sid Avery witnessed history through the lens of his camera. He was there when James Dean filmed his final movie. He was there when Frank Sinatra recorded. And as the SoCal Scene's Allison Martino tells us, the photos are now part of a living gallery, a SoCal classic where the years simply fade away. Humphrey Bogart at the helm of his boat, the Santana. Liz Taylor sunning herself on a movie set in Texas. Audrey Hepburn chauffeuring her dog across the Paramount lot. And James Dean in the only remaining photo of him on the set of Rebel Without a Cause. These are just some of the iconic Hollywood images you can view and even purchase at Dragonette Showroom on La Cienega in Los Angeles. I don't think that people live like galleries. It's much more home-like. So rather than isolating this art, isolating the photographs on a plain wall, white wall with lots of space around them, you actually can see how you could live with them. And to me, that's exciting. Owner Patrick Dragonet says, thanks to legendary photographer Sid Avery, the golden age of Hollywood lives on in his images. My dad had the natural ability to put people at ease and to kind of blend in. Ron Avery, Sid's son, a photographer himself, worked with his father and has heard all the intimate stories firsthand. How many images do you think your father took? Oh, gosh, I don't know, 5,000 or so? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. One of Sid's first assignments was to shoot Humphrey Bogart in 1952 for the Saturday Evening Post, but Bogart wanted nothing to do with it. My dad said to the guy at the studio, is, look, I, if I don't get these pictures, I, I'm not gonna get paid. Dad shows up at the house, knocks on the door, eight in the morning, Ah, kid, it's you. Okay, come on in. You know, he goes, what do you want me to do? He goes, whatever you're doing. He goes, well, we just moved in. Can't you see? My dad goes, yeah, I can see all the boxes. Whatever you normally do is fine. So he got pictures of him hanging photos, unpacking dishes, you know, all kinds of things, having breakfast. And my dad would just shoot what was happening. He didn't tell him to do anything. And Bogart was starting to realize, well, this isn't as painful as I thought. Mm -hmm. You want to get a picture of, uh, you know, with Betty and, and, and the, you know, my dad's, can the dogs be it? He goes, yeah, right in front of the fireplace. They did that picture too. Mm -hmm. And then my dad said, well, thank you very much, Mr. Bogart. This has been really great. More than I could have hoped. I've encroached on your life enough. He goes, hey, no, no. You want to get a picture of me and my Jag in the front? It's really a pretty car. Hey, hey kid, look, you, you want to go out on the Santana? We got it down in Newport Beach, Dock 59. And, and my dad's like, well, gee, yeah, and he goes, he looks down, and he goes, well, don't wear those fucking hard shoes. I just redid my deck, wear tennis shoes. Tomorrow morning, eight o'clock. This went on for almost a week. He could not get away from him. And this started out as something that might right. have never happened. Right. I met Ron at MP TV Images, the studio his father created to preserve and archive the work of more than 60 photographers. So when did your father realize photography should be preserved? and photography should be appreciated and viewed again. I would say it was in the 70s when he started uh, printing his own work and selling it through galleries and realizing that a lot of his work was missing, either by theft or never coming back or getting wet in the attic. And he knew you can't shoot these people again. Right. Cultural icon James Dean died tragically at the age of 24. Sid Avery is one of the few photographers to even shoot the promising young actor. James only made three films. Your dad is on two of them. My dad was on Rebel Without a Cause and Giant. And uh, he, again, he was assigned and he was warned up front. This guy is a photographer thrown off the set. Stay out of his eye line, stay back. So my dad went up to the observatory and he had a new Hasselblad. Jimmy would see my dad shooting and he'd sort of turn it on for the camera in between shots. He'd look over and he, or he'd pose and he did a shot like Jimmy did this all by himself yeah. and my dad did the shot. So it was really kind of a nice, fun couple of hours. Let's discuss these, these shots here okay. of, of uh, your dad on the set of Giant. Okay, right, it's so. in the middle of nowhere in the hot Texas desert. Dad went there to shoot uh, for about a week. It was there that Sid snapped a candid of James Dean's co-star, Elizabeth Taylor, that ended up being one of the violet-eyed beauty's favorites. If you really take the picture apart, it's not Aesthetically a great picture. It's harsh lighting, it's a dirt background, and her violet eyes are closed, which was one of her best features. But it's just the captured moment that mm -hmm. sells it. Is that would be one of your most requested photos of people that like to have photography on their walls? That and I think um, Audrey Hepburn, because mm -hmm. she's just so classy, yeah. 
where they were going from soundstage to lunch. Mm -hmm. And my dad was walking and she was on her bike with her dog Famous in the basket. And her Thunderbird was in the background. And my dad said, would you mind just stopping right there? And he took the picture. And it, it's just been sort of an iconic shot of her. Sid also shot Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward, Steve McQueen, and of course, another fan favorite, Frank Sinatra. Sinatra could be very difficult. He was a guy that you wanted to stay out of his eye line, use a longer lens, stay back. My dad was one of the few photographers that was able to call him Frank. Speaking of Frank Sinatra, can I see the Ocean's Eleven pictures? Yeah, you can, it's right okay. up here. I have to see them. These okay. movies were just vehicles for these yeah, guys to exactly. have fun. My dad had his camera on his tripod. He said to the director, I'd like to get a shot before you go to lunch. They moved the camera dolly out of the way. My dad put down his camera. He took two frames and, Sid, and Frank said, you got it, Sid? And my dad said, well, and he goes, okay, that's lunch, everyone. So we only have two frames. Sid had retired when Warner Brothers called him to photograph the Ocean's Eleven remake. Let's just talk about how amazing it is that your dad's on the first one in 1960, and right. then to be able to come back and do this in 2001 with a completely different cast, right. complete redo, and to be able to have that bookend in his life. It's really remarkable. Well, that's what I told him when he was gonna turn it down because he didn't have a camera, he hadn't shot in years. I told him he was crazy <laughs> and he should do it. Well, this is so cool to have them right in your office, like, like across from each other. Yeah, that's why we did it. Anyone can view these images online at mptvimages.com. That's where Patrick Dragonet found an image of Steve McQueen that's become his bestseller. Well, the fun thing was that I actually got to sit down and look at all the archives. There's an image of uh, Steve McQueen, and there's quite a few of them, but there was one they had they'd never printed. And I was like, what do you mean you've never printed? And I call it bullseye because he's got that gun and he's like just staring you down. That may be one of the biggest sellers we've had. So both Sid Avery and Patrick Dragonette are keeping old Hollywood alive, at least through photographs. Thank you so much, Allison. You can learn more and even purchase images from the Avery Collection. Follow them on Instagram at MPTV Images. The SoCal Scene.